This isn't actually a podcast. <laughs> but welcome to Graphic Tales, I guess. Uh, I am i don't know if I would say my name, because if it's not a podcast, is, am I really the host? But I guess I am. I'm Rob Southgate, and today I have a guest for us. Uh, this is really cool, because actually, uh, well, George, uh, George Lunsford, here's the book for anyone watching on video. Uh, we'll talk about the book in a minute. So if you didn't catch that, or if you're listening on audio, we'll talk about it. Uh, George is actually the first official guest on Graphic Tales. I have others that I just haven't put out there. But George, I'm going to put this out pretty quickly because who knows? Maybe somebody will be inspired to get a Christmas gift. Maybe. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. I'm encouraging I'm so them. The first official guest. I like that. Of, of, well, it's not a podcast, so you're not really anything. But uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're just the guy I'm talking to about weird stuff. That's uh, that's uh, what I'm into. So, so I mean, you know, I can live with that. <laughs> so George, uh, first of all, George has a book uh, that he put out. It's called Legends, Myths, Monsters, and Ghosts. U.S. edition, which implies there's going to be a U.K. edition or Japanese edition or what? What's the other implication there? Uh, maybe a world edition later on. Right okay. now, I'm working on another book called Monsters of the World. So, Okay, okay. Uh, this is quite a tome, George. Uh, what are we at? 567. Let's see. We're Okay, by the time we hit the bibliography, we're at 570 pages. Uh, it's a heavy book. So even if you, uh, yeah, I mean, like you're going to want to read it, but when you're done with it, if if you got to throw it at somebody, it's it's going to do its job. Um, it works well. <laughs> it works. Well. <laughs> it serves multi purpose. So so George, um, I want to hear some stories, some of your favorite stories. So that's one of the things we're going to do in here. But I want to hear how did this book come about? How did you end up writing this? Well, I, I'm an odd person. I, I will warn you now. When I decide I want to do something. I do it regardless of whether it be I, when I was actor, I wanted to act. I went and started acting, I wanted to write a book. I started, I wrote books. I did, uh, I did the four small books, legends, myths, monsters, and ghosts. And I broke it into regions and I got picked up by this other publisher called beyond the fray. And they wanted it all condensed into one book. So I added a hundred more stories. I added, that's the tome. Stories. That's it. <laughs> and I added two more of the, uh, Indian tribes. Cool. and put the book out yeah i like it well i've i've been enjoying it i'm i'm reading it but it's funny it's one of those books you might be offended by this so be prepared it's not one of those <laughs> books that i read front to back it's one of those books that i leaf through and i'm like ooh, minnesota let's read about minnesota there and you i'm sitting, you know I'm, I'm looking at looking oh here's a good one out of maine uh, <laughs> the first one you got me on was the puck wedgies. I'm like, as soon as I saw the word puck wedgie, oh, I'm yeah. like, who else has written about puck wedgies? Let's read this I thing. Love uh, puck oh, it's fantastic. I, I I love how you did it. Um, if I was marketing this book, I'd market it as your uh, your paranormal bathroom reader because it is perfect. It's got those <laughs> short stories. You can skip around, and it's a fun read. That's uh, what I want. I want people just to enjoy the read. That's right. That's you know, right. Stories about their area. That when I was growing up, the older people would tell us stories. So we would go out after we heard the stories and check it out to see maybe if it's true or if it's not true. Right. So like the, there's one in there called the Brown Mountain Lights, in North Carolina. Yeah, I read this one. This is a good one. Well, we were. I was this big time in the ROTC and the military and all that. When I heard the story. We actually set up a military operation to go find the lights. Oh, Before really? We out, look over to the mountain and you can see the lights. So what we did, we had watchers at the lookout watching the mountain. We had everything broke down in grids. We had uh, SOS flare guns and everything. So whenever they would report to us where the light was, we'd all move to that grid on the mountain. So, spoiler, did you find anything? We did not see the lights on the mountain, but you could see them from the lookout. It actually went oh. over top of us, and we couldn't see it on the ground. Interesting. Wow. So is that your only personal UFO sighting? I've had two. Let's hear it. That's why you're I here. 
I had a UFO on out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when I was in the Navy. Mm. And I had one with me and my wife was flying back from Chicago, 30,000 feet in the air, and we seen it across from the plane as a silver cigar. Very, And it was clear? I mean, you could really see that it wasn't just another plane? It was right above, it was above the clouds, and it was just as... It was clear as I'm watching the TV right now. I mean, that's how clear it was. Wow. How long of a sighting was it? Uh, very short, maybe 30 seconds. It lit up real bright and disappeared. Wow. When it disappeared, uh, describe that. Was it, did it just like gone? Did it go up? What did it do? Couldn't see what direction it went. It, all you could see zip. was it really bright and boom, it was gone. You just, no idea which way it went. My, uh, my dad's i think it was like his parents and his grandparents it was like we're talking way back he was a kid so it had to be like you know 1945 or something they had a sighting in the backyard and his dad was calling him come out come out you got to see this said it looked like this was in bloomington illinois oh wow and they uh they said it looked the way his dad described it it looked like a um like a a balloon like a traveling balloon on fire and it came up above the tree line that's how they described it they didn't have words for this they didn't have the words ufo or anything back then so this thing came up and he had time to call like georgie georgie get out here you gotta see this and the whole family's sitting out there and watch this thing sit there for a second by the time i get dad got out there it was already gone but they, what they what my grandpa said is it just went as far as he could tell it went straight up but it's like what you described it was a flash just they're looking at this big flaming ball then it's gone well now the one i seen in the navy we actually watched it for five minutes or so it was really was there was nothing there and the out over the water just the water yep the forward lookout reported seeing a light off the port side so i was on aft lookout so i turned around and started looking and watching it in my binoculars and it was a uh, looked like a like a disc but you couldn't tell it was about eight miles away but it yeah. had the light going back and forth like this mm, like close encounters yeah and it just and we watched it and watched it and we called in the combat systems nothing on radar nothing at all mm. they checked everything we had nothing around us and and just a few minutes after it did you know so many of this looked like a search pattern type thing going on it just stopped it lit up real bright and it shot straight up in the air and you could actually see the light trail. Yeah. 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 That's kind of how my grandfather described it. That's it how he knew it went up. Cause he said, you could kind of see like a tail, but it was like, like that. Yep. And what was weird back in, we never thought about UFOs that much. I mean, that was in 86, 87, okay. somewhere in that area. So we didn't think anything about it. We're a bunch of young kids out in the middle of the ocean on a ship. <laughs> and you're thinking, what is this thing? We're out here on a ship yeah yeah did you get talked to about it did anyone like debrief you or say you didn't no. see anything no, no nothing nobody said anything nobody ever talked about it anymore interesting it, not even your your crew members no they didn't think anything about it we was on a way <laughs> to a, we was on a party cruise basically what it ah. so we we really weren't worried about what was in there. so you're not sure what you were seeing out there <laughs> We was on our way to uh, the Canary Islands. Okay. We headed to. Wow. It's like who cares about the light? We're going to Canary Islands with our two days. <laughs> when you said you were out in the boat, I was wondering if you saw anything emerge from the the water because you know that's the big talk now is the UAP stuff, the stuff coming up out of the water. And I've heard those stories forever. Well, that know? makes me wonder if it didn't do that before we actually seen it for the forward lookout, seen it because mm -hmm. it was a little forward of the port side. Okay. By the time and it was down about midways of the ship straight out about eight miles because the horizon's 10 miles it was just inside the horizon interesting about three o'clock in the morning wow oh three so you could really see that there was light there it wasn't we thought it was a submarine uh, con tower okay is what we all thought to begin with because you know it had that weird shape like a like almost like a disc but it was just you know like this yeah the lights and it just moved back and forth and it didn't look right so we kept watching it and like i said boom it was gone what about other 
uh, things because your book is filled with, you know, we should give the premise of the book. So what you did is you go state by state and you tell legends, myths, ghost stories, UFO stories, cryptids. You kind of cover a few things in each state, really good, just fun stories. I like how you did this because I, I like that you you pick stories that there some of them have some some ambiguity to them where you read it and you go eh, I don't know but it's a good story you don't debunk them you don't go this is a pile no, no, no. no I, I just wanted they, to give you the stories from your state that's my hope yeah thing. well that's just it when I was reading it I'm like you know there there none of them are the ones that I feel like are just a pile they're the ones that there's enough of a question that you go is there something here. And some of them, there is absolutely something there, in my opinion. I'm reading it going, oh, yeah, I know what this is. I know what he's talking about. Kind of like the stories you just told, where you go, yep, there's, that's not, doesn't mean they're aliens. Doesn't mean it's some creature from outer space. Didn't know what it was. Don't know what it is. That is the yeah. true definition of a UFO. You got that right. Did yeah, you I, read the one about Jaws? The real story? No, about but I do. Wait, is this about the Indianapolis or is it something... Oh no, this is from Jersey. Lay it on me, man. I'm a huge Jaws fan. I'll give you the 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 overview. I won't tell you the whole thing. Oh, I haven't read New Jersey yet because I was saving it because it's got Jersey Devil in there, which is a great one. Well, I was told by a friend of mine that I had to put that in there. You do. Or he would beat me. You have to. And you even said that at the beginning of the chapter. That's when I started reading it. I put it down, but I'm like, you said, well, it's not about Jersey Devil, but I'll get there. And I'm like, yeah, if somebody he knows he has to tell this story because it's a good one. But tell me the Jaws one. Well, this is this is what really happened, what caused the movie Jaws. Uh, it was back in like the 1920s when kids would work in factories. There wasn't no child labor laws and all that stuff. Well, the, these young men had just got out of the factory for lunch, and they went to go down. They went down by one of the tributaries that feeds the ocean. And they decided it was hot. It was hot in the factory, so they just stripped off their clothes to go skinny dipping. They all jumped in the water, and one of the boys was back behind the rest of them, moving up towards them. All of a sudden, the water started swirling, and something grabbed him and disappeared in the water. Whoa. So they all poured out of the water, except for that one that was that was uh, attacked. It was gone, yeah. And they they're, went and got a search party going on. They found all these people to come and help search for this little boy. And there was a big muscle weightlifter guy there. And he was looking at the water, and he just kept looking kind of funny, and he waded down in the water, and he stuck his arms down in the water, and it lifted up, and he had the boy's body, what was left of it. Oh. About the time he did, a big old bull shark, about, I think it was between six or eight feet long, come out of the water and hit him in the thigh. And wow. Him. But he, fortunately, he was strong enough that he was able to beat it off of him, and it just took a chunk out of his leg. And uh, that's what it was. Come to find out that bull shark had come up the tributary. And when the boy got in the water, it started it fed on him. Wow. And then they found out later on that there were more attacks by other different sharks off the Jersey Shore. Now, what year was this? I think it was in the 20s. I don't remember right offhand. So there, there's probably a good chance that somebody, you know, Peter Benchley, read the story and went, there's an idea here. Yeah, probably. I think the guy <laughs> who wrote the book, actually, he ran across the story in the newspaper. Okay, yeah, Peter Benchley wrote the book, so. Yeah. yeah, interesting, because, you know, that's always the buzz. People go, well, you know, and this is this is this couldn't happen. Sharks don't attack people and all that. It's like, no, there there have been instances and it sounds yeah. like there might have been a grain of truth to this it's it's worth noting now is it a megalodon coming up and eating half the shore in one bite no it's not uh <laughs> oh lord but you never know you never know uh i agree so so but so you go state by state you tell these great stories they're fun to read like i said it's it's a great toilet companion because you it's like <laughs> you get one or two stories in and you're like yeah that was great um, I'm glad to be useful. So, you know, <laughs> you are, you're a useful guy, George. Uh, but do you personally, I know you've got an interest in, you had two UFO stories. Do you have other personal accounts? Like, have you encountered, I know you have a Bigfoot section. We'll get to that. But have you seen a Bigfoot? Have you, or some type of cryptid, cryptid? Have you had ghost encounters? Yes. I've had ghost encounters and dealt with ghosts, but I've never had a cryptid. And that's my goal. 
That's your goal. Bigfoot and me are going to meet face to face one of these days. You know, there's a guy in our group who uh, I'm not going to say who he is because he hasn't come on for an interview yet, but that was what he did was Bigfoot hunting. And I was interviewing him for something else. And uh, as we're, I'm interviewing him, he, he, I made a Bigfoot joke or he made a Bigfoot joke. And I said, oh yeah, I, you know, that's cool. And he went, were you into that? And he started telling me, holy cow. Oh, stuff. wow. Uh, yeah. So, you know what? Maybe he'll hear this and reach out to you, George, and say, hey, you okay. want to see a Bigfoot? Uh, well, that's why I'd like to have, because I, when I wrote, I'm working on this other book for next year. I actually had people from around the world sending me encounters, which is going in the book next year. Amazing. Encounters from uh, England, from different creatures. I've got one encounter from Australia, and I've got probably six or eight from the, from North America. Wow. Great. Yeah, we uh, we were in Portland, Oregon, and you know that's big Bigfoot country up there. And I kept saying, I'm going to see a Bigfoot. Oh, it's going to be cool. I was joking around. And we were at these waterfalls and I had this weird feeling. Now I didn't see anything. Nothing was there, but I had this weird feeling. And I go, I wonder if there's ever been a sighting here. And I pulled it up and there had been not that long before we were there, a significant sighting wow. at the waterfalls uh, when people were there for wedding pictures and it popped in and popped out and the whole group saw this thing in an area that when you're standing there and you're looking at it, you know, you, you, the pictures that I saw, I'm like, Oh, you know, it could be anything. When you're standing there, you go, there is not a chance that somebody in a furry suit or not is getting up there. They would be dead. So what the hell did they see that came out of that area? Uh, yeah, it's pretty damn interesting. Now you said you've had ghost stories though. What, what about some ghost encounters? Well, the very first one I had was I was in my late teens and I was laying in my bed asleep and I just felt something that made me wake up. And I looked and my great grandmother was sitting on the end of the bed. Now she was alive when I, I she was alive for a long time after I was born, but she was sitting on the end of my bed. Now it didn't scare me. I was just kind of confused. And I asked, I said, what's wrong? She said, no, no, I just wanted to come by and tell you, I love you. And I'm going home and, I, and I'll see you some other time. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. She goes, it's okay. Just, just go on back to sleep. And I knew it was her because I could smell her perfume. Oh, wow. So you had a full body apparition appearance and you had, you could smell and you were awake, right? Huh? You were awake? Yeah, I was totally awake. I could tell you everything's going on in the, my bedroom at that time. Wow. So I laid down and went back to sleep and I got up the next morning and then found out she had passed away. Wow. That's a good one, man. That's, that's a significant one because full body ones are rare. I got one. You're a lot better than that. Really? Cause that I'm, I have, I'm thinking about that one. So lay it on me. Let's get this brain going. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, this right to my divorce, my per, my first divorce, I was, this girl was staying with me and uh, my house was haunted. And I went to a haunted high school and everything, but the house where I was at. Hold on a second. Been, We're going to put a pin in that. We're going to come <laughs> back to, I went to a haunted high school. I mean, I've seen movies like that, but. We're going to put a pin right there. So anyway, you went to a haunted high school. Now you're, you're with this girl after your divorce. Okay. Right. And the house where my house is, there had been a family die of tuberculosis there. And I found this out later on. Yeah. You're like, I, hopefully it wasn't two weeks before. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, there, there was the, the family was, there was a, a, a man and a woman. And then they had a young son about 10, 12 years old. And they had a daughter right around 16, 18 years old. I called her Bertha because she was one that was always in my house. Okay. The little boy, you, you'd catch out of the corner of your eye, somebody looking in the window, and you'd look and he wouldn't be there by there. Oh. Uh, he was a little prankster. Yeah. And um, so she was there at the house, and I'm at work, and I get a phone call, and she is frantic. She is screaming. She's crying. She's all upset. I'm like, what is wrong? And she said, I... She said, "You that change you put on the table? I said, yeah, I thought about 10 or 12 pennies on the table before I left. 
She said they're coming off the table. They're landing on their edge, rolling across the floor, stopping on their edge, turning 90 degrees, rolling over and falling over on heads, every one of them. And she was freaked out. She took pictures of them and everything. Wow. She left soon after that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Bertha was playing. Bertha didn't like her apparently. So. Yeah, she was she was spooking her, but she was playing. You know, yep. I I've definitely I had a friend um who had a, a really good story that I wish I could get him to tell it for Graphic Tales is actually eventually going to be a book that has these stories. So I'll definitely be contacting you. Uh but he had this great story where he had a, a friend that died. And uh let me close that. He had a friend that died. And uh he had this dream and he said in the dream, his friend was like trying to talk to him and he was like floating around the room. And he said, it was really weird. He goes, I never have dreams like this. And he goes, his friend was like agitated, but trying to reach him. And he said, he, he held up a key and he said, my friend said right away, he knew he's like, Oh, that's that damn like key to the locker or whatever that we lost. And he's got the key and he's holding it. And he said, he sees him put it down by the TV on this thing. And he said, then the guy just went like, and was gone. He said, he woke up the next day and he's thinking, what the hell forgets <laughs> about it. Right. <laughs> said he's getting ready to go to work. He's doing his thing. And he said, he walks by the TV and he looks down and there's the goddamn key. <laughs> and, but here's the crazy thing. It's right where his dream saw it. But he said it was, he said it was his old key to some old locker or something. Right. It was shiny silver, like it was brand new. Oh, wow. And it was the key. That is so cool. Yeah, wow. I was like, man, that's an amazing story. But I, I can't get him to commit to uh, tell the story. So I just tell it and say, my friend. Uh, <laughs> it's like I've got a great UFO story, and I just have to go, my friend, and this UFO story. But that's for another episode. So, so George, um, in your book, I mean, that was a great story, by the way. Thank you. Uh, your gateway into the book, because we don't have a lot of time here. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely want to talk to you again, though, because this is too much fun. Uh, I'm, old, man. I'm good. Your gateway stories. What would you say if you had to pick three stories that people like get the book, go right to this and read it? What would you say are three stories that you would you'd call your gateway stories that are going to hook people? Robert the Doll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't read that one yet. I'm so excited. I know what Robert the Doll is. In fact, I can tell you right now, there are two, at least two people in this group that are terrified of haunted dolls that know about Robert the Doll. So, yeah, oh, Robert the Annabelle. Doll. Annabelle's in there, too. Oh, is she? I didn't see that. I saw Robert in there. Yep. So, Robert the Doll. Uh, the true story behind the exorcist. Hmm. Now, do you have the Malachi Martin story in there, or is it? Oh boy. Okay. What else? Uh, what would the third one be? I don't know. The third one's a hard one for me because I like a lot of the stories. I really enjoyed writing them and researching them. So, be like third one. What would it be? AJ Holmes. Yeah, yeah. That's that's always fascinating. Yeah, he he was a. Uh, he was a character. Yeah. Really but, you know, Big Nose George is a fantastic story, too. <laughs> How dare you? You know, my first <laughs> name is George. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. There's a city ordinance about two Georges on one Zoom call uh, <laughs> that we're violating right now at this moment. But, uh, I can believe that, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, there you go. Three gateway stories. I'm going to also say the Puckwedgie story because Puckwedgies are just fascinating and i jumped right to your end your theory on bigfoot i don't know do you want to say it do you want to spoil it or do you want people to have to read it uh i've been talking about a lot so it doesn't matter lay it on us anyway so yeah lay it on us i believe that's my personal belief with all the stories i read from the indians and when they first come over here from asia and everything else They talked about in many of their legends about the giants that were here, the white giants. Right. 
and my my thought on Bigfoot is Bigfoot is the descendant of the white giants because the Indians attacked them because they were cannibals and they was they would kill some of the Indians and eat them. So they attacked them and they they never mentioned about killing them all off, but they mentioned about them being gone. Now there has been multiple multiple sightings for years and years and years around the mammoth caves and right. it's a, one of the largest cave systems in the world so i believe that that's where they fell back into the the caves and they stayed in there and they retained certain things but they also lost certain things and i think that's why they're covered with hair because you know they didn't have the clothing anymore evolution yeah and uh, I mean, if you look at even the stories about the the boy that was raised by the wolves, when they found him, his body was covered with hair. Right, right. I've so, read that story. Sure. Yeah. So that's what makes me think that, and plus the fact that they found a giant's uh, skeleton in the Lovelock Caves out in Nevada. They took one of the sandals that they found from the giant, and they took a Bigfoot casting, and it fit perfect in it interesting theory I, you know what i i i can see that i can see that that's a good solid theory it's something that something people could really investigate our uh our person in our group i wonder if they have anything to say about it so uh without saying from. their name yeah write to george or write in on our group and let us know and i can always share I'll it with george the, the link and i'll join the group yep well i certainly will uh so George, we're going to end this one. I told okay. you, it's a nice, short, sweet. I just really wanted to kind of let people know about it. You can order it and still get it by Christmas. The book is Legends, Myths, Monsters, and Ghosts, the U.S. edition by George Langford. Did I say that right? George Lunsford. <laughs> Lunsford. I'll put a link in here. Hey, support what we do by ordering it through the link because we get a tiny kickback. It doesn't take any money out of George's pocket. It doesn't take any money out of your, your pocket, but it puts a tiny bit of money in our pocket to help pay for this stuff. So uh, please do that. But George, where else can people follow you? If they have stories, they can maybe connect with you. Where can uh, they do that? I have a Facebook page. I have a Instagram and I have a MeWe. And of course I have a website. All right. My website. I'll I'll send you the website if you yeah, want. Yeah, send it. me the links and I'll put it in there. Um and do you want to do you want to say what it is? Is it like georgelunford.com or author george x 10 host.com. That's why you didn't want to say it. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> my wife created it for me. She's the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good, man. Well, it was a pleasure speaking to you. I know we've got lots of stories. In fact, I, I think at some point, uh, number one, we should come back and, and just tell some stories. Uh, number two, if you're open for it, at some point, I'm thinking about putting a little round table with some of my uh, my story collectors, and we could just sit around and, and have a little fun. So I'd I'll like to invite it. you to that. So I'll, I'll keep you in, in mind for that, George. All right, thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let me know what you think and order George's book. Support this guy. Support us. And it's definitely worth getting. Like I said, it's an incredible bathroom book. You're into this stuff. I'm into this stuff. George, you're into this stuff. George, you should order this book, too. Uh, it's a it's a great book. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, there it is. He's got <laughs> <laughs> you have it, too. Uh, thanks again, George. And thank your wife for the wonderful website name. I will do that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>